These guys are like seasoned debaters. She's like setting them up for traps. He's like caveating as she's doing it. She's about to make this girl so second I, I guess her abortion. Kind of, Jesus. Because oh. I don't see a difference. Then why are you bringing it up? I would also say oh. that abortion is from the moment they are inside of you, my baby. Who are these pe These people? Bro, what the f no offense, but like when I meet like random kids on college campuses, they're like, what do you, is moral and ethic the same thing? I don't even know the answer to that. Who are, these people are all like f***ing professional tier f***ing debaters. What the f***? But you not do not, I, you do not, not you do not, the, you do that, not, I, you do not, you do not get to mitigate. No. Oh my God, a killer silver bullet. These are like advanced tier, these are like advanced tier abortion arguments. Why are we watching tier one abortion debates? Bro, this abortion debate is more advanced than any other f***ing debate I've heard in my entire life on f***ing Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> what? What? These people are doing a phenomenal job. You probably do Jesus Christ! So I see we all been getting it on. <laughs> How about that? Wait, are these people all like 16? I didn't know what plan B was until I started having sex. I, that just like, maybe I missed that day in class, but that was not taught in sex ed. So I didn't know what plan B was until um, I started having sex. But now I'm, I'm a lot more educated, a lot more comfortable, like I'm on birth control. Um, but obviously like birth control isn't always effective, isn't always accessible. So I understand like my privilege in that. Well, the first time that I had unprotected sex was a couple months ago with my fiance. Um, we we're both adults and we were in a real period of grief um, because I had just had a miscarriage, um, I think about a month before um after we'd had protected sex um the first time that i had unprotected sex was unprotective unprotected sex was with the person that i am currently married to um how we got old are these people out of high school what the i was 18 it was like a week after i graduated um and we're really happy together and we love the idea of having a child you know currently pregnant right now are you going to college or are you, do you have a job? Like how is, how is that work? Imagine she gets debated um, so into aborting her baby right here. I try to advocate for people who are in the same position as the person inside of me right now. And I think that the value of their life is intrinsic to every fetus. So honestly, right now I'm just chilling as an activist. Jesus, that's your full-time you job? <laughs> yeah, true, good my... question. Who is that girl? Fathers give me some. Sick. I haven't had sex before. It's not just because I, I'm Catholic. It's like I there are other. <laughs> you know what a good fucking skit would be? Oh, f I have so many good ideas. Okay, is somebody? I don't know how you would make this funny or whatever. But like, if you misgender somebody but they're cis, you don't actually care that much, right? Like, let's say you see somebody's like, oh, is that a boy or girl, he or she? And it's like, oh, it's a, it's a he. Oh, oh, shit, I couldn't tell, sorry. But if it's like, it's a he, and they're trans, Shut now up, you've like, up baby. like a million times more. Like, if, you, if you're not sure, because it's a little, they're a little bit androgynous or a little ambiguous, like, oh, is he or she, you don't know? But then as soon as like, but they're trans, they're like, oh, shit. Reasons as to why it happens, such as pair bonding, and I think, just it helps to keep the marital act within marriage because newsflash, <laughs> sex makes babies. So I think it's just good for a child to have a mother and father because when families are sort of separated, it causes a lot of problems for children, especially like with divorce. Now it's like uh, surveys have shown that and divorce is often worse. Bro ran out of breath from walking uh, from the back of the, of the room. Because it's just like, at least you know, like, when the parents pass, it's like they didn't leave you behind, so. I have two questions for you. Uh-oh. The first one is, where did you get those surveys from? Uh, I don't remember. I was just in, just in passing, but That's I don't fine. really know. Oh! Thing I wanted to Wait, what was the survey? Hold on. No, it's like, uh, surveys have shown that and divorce is often worse than uh, the death of a parent, just because it's just like, at least you know, like, when the parents pass, it's like they didn't leave you behind, so. Divorce is worse than the death of a parent. What is worse, divorce or death of parent? I'm trying to think of what would be worse. I feel like parental death, it's gotta be highly contingent on age. That would be my feeling. Like, if your parents die when you're in your 20s, that's gotta be really hard. And before that, it's like, 30s, I'm in my 30s. I mean, like, it'll be sad, I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm heartless, sorry. 40s and 50s is probably pretty bad. Because it's your parent dying, that's always sad. But 
It's also somewhat expected. I, it would depend on the manner of death too. Like parents like having heart problems for a year and then they die is one thing versus like your parents die in a car accident would also be another thing. Um, divorce. I think I, I feel like I would believe this guy. I think, I feel like divorce would be worse. Actually, that's what my guess is gonna be. Paintingly assessing their data, the authors of a new study see an unmistakable pattern emerging. Parental separation has stronger and wider effects on mental illness than death. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I totally, I totally misinterpreted this question. I thought it was what's worse for you, getting divorced from your significant other or, um, or having a parent die. But this is saying what's worse for the children is having your parents separate or having a parent die. I'm sorry, I totally misunderstood what you're saying. Parental separation has worse effects on your mental health than death? I feel like, I feel like that could be the case, but it's gotta be because there's so many other things playing into parental separation. Like a lot of separated families probably have a lot of unhealthy dynamics. That would be my guess maybe. By the psycho psychological effects of parental death with those of parental separation, the researchers parsed data collected between 93 and 98 from 2,605 male twins from their junior population-based twin registry looking for statistical linkages between parental loss, any loss, death, and separation during childhood, subsequent lifetime risk for seven common psychiatric and substance use disorders. It's in the their data. The authors of the new study see an unmistakable pattern emerging. Parental separation has stronger and wider effects on mental illness than death. Specifically, researchers conclude that parental separation significantly predicted risk for all disorders except phobias. Odds ratios range between 1.45 and 2.03. Looking closer at their data, researchers conclude that parental separation had the strongest impact on risk for depression and drug abuse such dependence. By contrast, parental death was marginally significant. voices are knocking. With the only risk of phobia and alcohol dependence. Let them in. I also feel like that's also true. I'm, re I'm relying on heavy anecdote here because I've only known a few people like this. I'm relying on heavy anecdote here. I feel like if people, I don't know if I've ever met somebody that's carried trauma from an early parent dying. I don't know if maybe as humans we process death easier, but like I feel like I've met people who are like, oh yeah, my dad died when I was a teen. I was like, oof, damn. And they're like, no, no, it's okay. Like I'm like, but I guess they could also have underlying trauma that they are hiding or they're not like, obviously gonna, you know, throw it out. Whereas I've heard a lot more people complain about like, if your parents split, there's like f shit happening. Yeah, there's probably, man, f there's probably so many, there's probably so many um, confounding variables and everything here. Um, like if a, if a divorce burns over like three or four years, that would probably be really bad. The effect, yeah, this is what I'm thinking. The effect of parental death persists a relatively short time and it's weaker impact on adult psychopathology than that of parental separation. This conclusion they acknowledge is in accordance with previous studies that have found no or weak association between parental death and psychiatric disorders. The authors of this study indeed interpret the findings of 2014. So basically if you're gonna get divorced um, and you really care about your children, you shouldn't get divorced. You should kill your spouse. I have two questions for you. The first one is where did you get those surveys from? I don't remember. I was just in, just in passing, but That's I don't fine. really know. The second thing I wanted to ask. Uh, I wonder if you quoted this correctly. Uh, I mean. It causes a lot of a child's newsflash. <laughs> Sex makes babies, so I think it's just good for a child to have a mother and father because when families are sort of separated, it causes a lot of problems for children, especially like with divorce. Now it's like uh, surveys have shown that divorce is often worse than uh, the death of a parent, just because it's just like, at least you know, like when the parents pass, it's like they didn't leave you behind, so. I have two questions. That's, so he even understated his case. So it's not just simple surveys that have shown, it's been actual peer reviewed research has shown. So he's very correct on that. For you. The first one is where did you get those surveys from? Uh, I don't remember, I was just in, just in passing, but That's I don't fine. really know. The second thing I wanted to ask, uh, you said something about sex always making babies. Well, you didn't no, say always. You said sex makes babies, and I would love to challenge that a little bit because it's, it's not the it's not the only reason for like sex. Because it's like you have the pair bonding and sort of the emotional uh, going on between the two people, but sort of like the sort of the telos, the primary purpose of it, sort of 
is for that, but there's other legitimate sort of secondary reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. So you would say that the primary purpose of all sex is babies? Because uh, I wouldn't say like all sex, because there's times where you can't conceive because like the woman cycles that she's not always fertile. <laughs> These guys are like seasoned debaters. She's like setting them up for traps. He's like caveating as she's doing it. <laughs> Wait, why? These is there like some professional debate school in? In California, that they run kids through or some shit. What the fuck? <laughs> Which I think just was just the natural order of that act is for having children. Okay. Yeah. I think what they were getting at is to not assume that all sex is heterosexual. Ah, oh, yeah. kill me! Ah, oh, kill me! Ah, oh, now, now we're back in California. Ah, uh -huh. excuse me. Did you just assume heteronormativity in regards to sexual intercourse? You disgusting white. Cis, oppressive, colonialist, white, male. Yeah, that is a pretty heteronormative view. I completely uh, validate and respect that you don't want to have sex for you. But uh, for those of us who can't even- Bro, when we're talking pro-life or pro-choice, nobody cares about the homos, okay? Nobody gives a f about a dude getting fucked in the ass or two lesbians scissoring in a fucking pro-choice, pro-life conversation. Why would you think this is fucking relevant? Why would you even bring this up right now? And ever for any reason get pregnant during sex I think it's a little reductive to assume that that's like the reason people would do it wait what am I, I even think there's in here also for? a difference between reproductive oh. sex and non-reproductive yeah. sex yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like let's be so for real there's so many things you can do to not get pregnant and still have sex with somebody I'm obviously not Catholic but I think that <laughs> 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 but I think it's also important to um, to remember that you know Catholics and people who do believe that sex should be within marriage um, also acknowledge that there's types of sex like oral sex for example that you don't conceive children by so I think maybe not to put words in your mouth but maybe what Luke is referring to specifically is coitus and not other types of sex yeah. coitus because yeah, people can mean different things by sex it's just like um, it's a very general term yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Ragni, the director of this episode. Please like this video if you enjoy watching it. What and subscribe up, to our Ragni? Channel. Now, let's get back to the video. I have had an abortion. Oh! I had Two. mine about a year and a half ago. Um, and I've never felt shame, never felt regret. I've never even second-guessed my choice. Um, Surprisingly, my parents are Middle Eastern immigrants, and they were like very supportive. The nine months of pregnancy isn't considered to be a challenge in its own. It's like, oh, you know, you can give the child up for adoption. Oh, there are like resources. There are crisis pregnancy centers, but those nine months—that's still morning sickness. That's still doctor visits. I had to go to the ER in the very short time that it took me finding out that I was pregnant to getting the actual abortion because I thought I had an ectopic pregnancy because that's what my gynecologist told me. Um, there are so many things to consider. I can't go to school if I'm sick, if I'm already, you know, mental health isn't something that's secure for me. And then on the top of that, I'm gonna have to deal with thinking about this pregnancy. Are people gonna judge me for being a teen mom? Okay, so I had an abortion fairly recently. I had Jesus. one. Um, <laughs> What's the one show where the lady's like, I had an abortion, it was twins, and the other one was like, damn, double kill. <laughs> that was so, so fucked up. Or double homicide, Jesus. Okay. You just had an abortion? Twins? Twins. Yeah, double homicide. Bitch. About three, two to three days before um, my recent birthday last year um, in November, um, it was a very unexpected um, event. I remember having symptoms almost immediately. I was about six weeks, I believe, five, five, five weeks and seven days. Um, I actually did not suspect I was pregnant because I had been going through some, um, some traumatic life events that threw my cycle off. I, my period was on average 40 days late, so I just Jesus. didn't suspect anything when I was six days late that past cycle. And my boyfriend, um, who I was confiding in at the time and telling about my 
my current uh, bodily circumstances had a, had a feeling. Beyond me, the, the woman in this equation who shouldn't know what's going on, he was the one that um, prompted me to go get a test. Yeah, boyfriends always have a feeling. As soon as you ever, I love how women, women will do this shit, okay? Women, women will be talking to you casually on the phone Okay, and she'll say some shit like, oh, it's kind of weird, like, my period's four days late. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go hang out with Rebecca later, and maybe we can, uh, yeah, you see each other tonight. Like, they'll just say shit like that, right? Now, I don't know, because women have different periods all the time, and your shit is all fucked, and your cycles are doing all crazy shit. Listen, if you're a man and you hear some shit like that, that is the only thing you think about for the rest of the fucking day, okay? You are hounding the bathroom trash can waiting for some fucking tampons to show up. You're like, bro, how are you just gonna say some shit like your period is four days late, <laughs> okay? I'm about to start shoving you down the stairs if you're not gonna get a pregnancy test. What are we doing right now, okay? Jesus. Because he felt that um, I was pregnant and um, when we found out it was a shock, um, I'm the type of person when in my relationships I make very clear my positions on um, how I am with you know, abortion and pregnancy and child rearing. I, I'm very transparent in that matter because there should be no room for error in that case, but that's because I'm fortunate enough to be educated in that manner. I, again, I was, I'm a volunteer with Planned Parenthood, so I knew the resources available to me. And at that time, um, when I did conceive, it was not when I was on birth control. And so partially I, I, I take responsibility for the circumstances that led to the conception of of that pregnancy. Um, although I'm very grateful and I'm very appreciative that I had access to this form of health care, it was something that I grieved heavily. It was something that my boyfriend grieved heavily. We were not ecstatic to have done this. We were not happy that we had to make this choice. But because of our plans as individuals, as adults, and our life plan is to get married, is to complete school, and to maximize our chances of being the parents that we want to be, I felt it irresponsible to be selfish and say, well, I want a baby and I don't want to make that hard choice to terminate. But when you think of somebody else, and that would have been another individual, you have to think what's best for them if they were to be born. And I'm not in a position to where I could emotionally, financially, nor physically provide for a child. Whereas if I would do the hard thing now, later on down the line, when I improve my circumstances, I can be the mother that I want to be instead of disadvantaging myself and that person who did not ask. So many chats said this sounds like a script. Um, it's probably something she has, I don't want to say rehearsed, but having an abortion for a lot of people is a pretty big deal. And I'm sure that her, she probably had to put like a considerable amount of thought into it. And I'm sure she's th th like second guessed herself and everything too. So it probably feels a little bit like a script, but just because she's probably personally thought about it so much, that's not very surprising at all. Asked to be put in that situation. Thank you for sharing those experiences with us because mm -hmm. I could hear in your voice, even though I couldn't see your face, mm -hmm. um, it's difficult to share. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so sorry that um, you had that period of grief and, and those experiences. Um, I've, Thank you. I've miscarried twice. Mm -hmm. um, and taking the abortion pill, I know, um, though it is a different process, it's not dissimilar in the function of it to yeah. a miscarriage. Um, but you did say something that I thought was interesting. Um, you, you said you think it's selfish to bring a child into a situation where you know that maybe you're not economically stable or you're not maybe in the best emotional state to have a child. Um, and my mother uh, has five children. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was born, my father was leaving. He was abusive. Oh, she, um, is she about to give the... And it worked out great we for were us. We food stamps. She was in college. She was waiting tables and sweeping under chairs when she was in labor with me. She's about to make this girl so second I, I guess. So I want to sympathize with that and say I know exactly... <laughs> Her abortion, kind of Jesus. ...economic struggle, that emotional struggle that a lot of women are in. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's fair to say that people who are in poverty or people who might have mental health or emotional issues are selfish for being, bringing children into those situations. Mm -hmm. Because I think that you can still have and love a child in those situations. And I don't think that okay. having children is something that we should reserve for the 
wealthy, for the um, people who don't have mental health issues. I, I don't think it's selfish for people who are not in those positions of privilege to have children. Damn. Right, rich, right, right. for the white, for those who right, right, are right. in a position. Right, I, so um, I just want to quickly respond to you. And um, it, there's ooh, a reason cough. why I included that in my personal statement. It's because that's a personal belief that I ascribe to myself. I don't think generally that it is selfish to bring children into your circumstances. I retract myself from in, in, in putting my personal beliefs onto other, other people's experiences. I only speak from how I feel because I am, I'm the king of my own fate. And in the same way that your mother chose to have five children, I chose not to. But I don't want to ever take that away from anybody. I think if you feel like you have the means and you have the willpower to be a mother, to be a father, you do that but that doesn't give you the right to determine for other people Damn. that they should also do the same. Well, Damn. I think that's kind of ironic, personally, uh -oh. because I feel like that's exactly the point of the question. It's whenever a person decides to have an abortion, whenever a doctor decides to perform an abortion, whenever a medical professional prescribes an abortion pill, they are making a choice for that child and pushing that onto the unborn person. Oh. Then, then they are saying that the unborn person, you don't deserve to live. You don't have the right to live. You are not rich enough to live. You are not privileged enough to live. You are not white enough to live. What about the woman though? Like that, 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 like, I've had this conversation with so many pro-life people and it's always, oh, the fetus, the embryo, this unborn life. And I'm like, what about me? But I was actually going through it. You can have all these hypotheticals about you're pushing this onto the unborn life. First of all, they never existed. They are not aware of their oh. existence. It's not a hypothetical about what they could have become or, or um, you know, you're not giving them the right to life. They never existed. First, first of all, they existed, scientifically. Yeah. Okay. Scientifically, an unborn fetus matches all of the qualifications that NASA has for a living individual <laughs> organism. NASA. Secondly, I'd like to say, what right does anybody have to mitigate the uh, outcomes of their own mistakes by oppressing another human being inside of them, by using unjust violence and excessive force against a peaceful being inside of what them? What about for incest? I got pregnant from Four years ago, I got pregnant from rape. Um, I was raped for years, years of my life. Jesus I have Christ. physical symptoms of that. I have reproductive issues. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How did this girl go from? Well, early in my life, I was introduced to sexual activity and I wasn't even ready for it. And then like 20 minutes later, she was like, I was actually raped uh, for years, okay? Jesus as a result of that. But I think it's important to say that um, babies like my daughter, Rachel, as I talked about before. Wait, what um, screen was I just on like where I could claim Mira, shit? Who I got pregnant with consensually um, are the same. They're, they're, they're DNA wise. There, there is nothing different in the DNA, the human DNA, between a baby who's conceived in rape and a baby who's Tab conceived consensually. W. So you're telling There's rape women that they should be having their children? <laughs> are you gonna make Free that decision point. for women that are just because your experience you think that it was ended up being a good idea for you to have these children? Are you then going to stand here and say that all women should have their children? Are you going to stand here and say that children who are conceived in rape are somehow different than children who are conceived consensually? No, because oh. I don't see a difference. Then why are you bringing it up? I would also say oh. that abortion is not evidence-based care for rape victims. There's no research that shows that the outcomes of victims getting an abortion is better than those who do not so if we want to go purely based off of medical science and evidence-based care i bet the outcomes are better socioeconomically no yeah uh, i will put <laughs> back that we do have statistical evidence that shows that women who have access to abortion and in societies where abortion is accessible there is an overwhelming decrease in the amount of abortions um, obtained and there's also an increase in the economic emotional and physical um, advancements of the people who have access to that care and i will um, acknowledge because I do think that what was inside of me, what was inside of you, what was inside of you, I, I personally believe it is a life. Um, it, it is. I mean, I held mine in my hands, but to Jesus. equate that to me, um, an, an already birthed human being, this this thing, I have a photo of it in my phone. I, I was going to bring my ultrasound. Photo of it. I it. thought that would Jesus. be triggering for some people. But what I possessed in my hands when I took it out of my pants, when I expelled it from my body, is n I think it is ludicrous to equate that to me. There was no head, there was no arms, there was no legs, there was nothing there. How far along were you? I was 
five weeks and seven days. You were five weeks and seven days? Yes. And I, you know I that, had the privilege. Do you know that at five weeks a baby has a heartbeat? Bro. It does not. It First does. of all, it does not. It, heart, it's, it has a two chambered heart. No, heart cells yeah, can not. beat in a petri dish if you remove it. Heart cells, it's, it's electrical impulses, but I mean, when we talk about life, and this is my personal um, opinion, I don't think um, when you draw the conclusion of what is life, I don't think that is a legal question. I think that is a moral and philosophical argument. And when you try and establish what is life, I mean, there are plenty of instances where we acknowledge that there is life and yet we make decisions for them. When people are brain dead, we acknowledge that there is life there and yet they are dead. I feel like when you try and say, well, this is life, so therefore it is deserving of rights, we extend more rights to someone who is hooked up to a machine keeping them breathing without any conscious experience and we extend to them more humanity than a woman and her body. And my argument is simply bodily autonomy. I think in no circumstance shall we force somebody, should the state, I should say, should the government compel somebody to use their body against their will, even if they are um, personally responsible for the individual. It's the reason why, even if you have a child and that child needs you for bone marrow or blood transfusions, the state cannot compel you and hook you up to a machine against your Jesus. will to force you to keep that individual alive. And I think um, and when we live in a democracy and we prioritize human rights, you have to put bodily autonomy above and preserve it regardless, even if you were a drunk driver and your irresponsible illegal actions led to the, the harm of another person. The state cannot put you in a position where your body must be used as a resource against your will. I think it is a violation. Okay, and first, what you would like firstly, to I ask you about all those Judith Thompson arguments. Victims. Okay. Uh, not economic outcomes after a random. I wasn't arguing off the rate. Well, yeah, well, as I said, you said, yes, we do have statistics. And then you brought statistics that had nothing to do with what I said. Um, oh. I would also like to say that uh, the whole bodily autonomy argument, it doesn't hold up. Pregnancy is ordinary and healthy care 99% of the time. Pregnancy yeah, we is have not comparable to hooking you up to a random person. Your offspring is your child. They are genetically and emotionally related to you from the moment they are inside of you, my baby. Who are these pe These people, bro, what the f No offense, but like when I meet like random kids on college campuses, they're like, uh, what do you, is moral and ethic the same thing? I don't even know the answer to that. But like, um, who are, these people are all like fucking professional tier fucking debaters. What the f Jesus. Is literally grimacing right now inside of me. They can make squint faces. So it's it's not even comparable the relationship between a child and the relationship between a rando. But you not do not you 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 do not get to mitigate the outcomes Damn. of your choices by violently ending the life of another human being that you are responsible for bringing into dependency on. Even if I even if I invited someone into my own home, a friend, a family member, I have the means if I choose, if I tell them I do not want you there, by my own choices, I allowed that person into my home, into my space, into my domain, and then I change my mind and I rescind my consent. We have the ability, it's called self-defense, and I'm nowhere near arguing that pregnancy, let me clarify now, before you jump to uh, conclusions about what I'm saying. We have no, no. Oh my God, a killer silver bullet. These are like advanced here. These are like advanced here abortion arguments. Um, upgrade your potions, you're gonna die soon. My potions are upgraded, you fucking moron. I can't upgrade to level 20. Um, the question afterwards for the invite, if I invite somebody to my home, I have a right to kick them out. What if you invite somebody into your home and then it begins snowstorming? And if you kick them out, they'll die in the snowstorm. Do you have a right to kick them out of your house then? Or do they have a right to the resource in your house? Oh, fuck. I wonder if she, I don't think she'll, yes. Uh, ask that, but. No issue with, and again, I'm not saying that pregnancy is the same as self-defense, but in those arguments, even when you put yourself and you put another person to a state of dependency, when you invite them into your home, you have the means to remove them. And I think when it comes to your body, and, and I'm just arguing in terms of the state, there's a lot of things that I disagree with in terms of like people smoking cigarettes, because we have evidence that shows Secondhand smoke kills. You can kill somebody from the means of you having an addiction to cigarettes. But should we punish that person for the choice that they made but simply because ask, they? But oh, can I ask ahead. something? What about the child inside of you? There was what I passed in my hands was not a child, and I think it is very disingenuous to say what I held in my hand is a you, is a you, is any of you. It just wasn't. Like, what was it? Then? An embryo. It's well, like a what, clump of cells. What's an embryo? What is an embryo? It's a clump embryo, of cells. Well, an embryo is just a term it's an for the body. stage of it's a not certain stage of development. So when we talk about in, the in the process of, of entire human life. Right. I agree. So it is. Why are we watching tier one abortion debates, bro? This abortion debate is more advanced than any other.
It's a bit I've heard in my entire life on fucking Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> what? What? These people are doing a phenomenal job. <clears throat> so it's, so, a, it's a human so, life, so you just agree. Is, is the egg unfertilized? Is that a human being? No, no, no because fertilization. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One at a time, one at a time. I, I want to hear what you guys have to say. So an egg is distinct from an embryo because... Uh, an embryo is a genetically is distinct whole organism. Mm -hmm. It's not merely just a part, like uh, skin cells, egg, sperm. Okay, hold on, wait. Tab W. What is this? 35 lock. Because mm -hmm. we can tell that because if you were to apply the net test, so like any amount of nutrition, any environment, or any amount of time, like an embryo will develop into a mature member of its species, but yeah. sperm, egg, skin cells, tumors, they're not going to develop into a right. whole organism. So it's not the same thing. Oh yeah, of course. I do, I, I absolutely agree. I think an embryo is a stage of development, but I don't think you afford that stage of development the same human rights that you would a full-grown human being. It's the, it's the reason why we make a distinction between children and adults. A child can develop into an adult. Do we automatically ascribe them, you can drink, you can vote? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not, they are not that yet. And why make that distinction but then say... But who, what, what how does that give us the authority to kill the child? Like, I'm not saying give you the authority to kill a child, but I think if that... The, the argument that I'm making is I feel like there is a fundamental difference between something being attached to you, reliant on your resources, and something being dependent on you for other types of resources beyond your physical body. It's the reason why I'm making um, a reference to um, blood transfusions and organ um, donations because that is directly attributing what your body needs to survive to give to somebody else to help them live as opposed to a child that is already born that simply needs your labor and financial resources to keep them alive and support their already existence and living on their own. But when we're talking about the value of human life, I don't think it's at all fair to say that an unborn child is worth more than their mother or who would be their mother. I don't think it's fair to say that the mother's needs and her state of life or their state of life don't matter in that situation because they do. And it's not this like killing a fetus for fun, no, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to be in that situation or to have an abortion. But like, you can't just act like we always should be prioritizing this what isn't even a child yet. But none of us are saying we're prioritizing the child over the mother. Yeah, you we're are. Saying, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Saying, yes. What happens during pregnancy? Ooh. What happens during pregnancy? Yeah. The mother is new. Uh, Trying to think of the word. Succumbing? Gestating. Gestating. Just succumbing. Gestating. Yeah. The mother is giving life to the fetus. The mother is supporting the fetus's life as it grows. And so what we're saying is that the child and the mother should be equally supported are they? through the pregnancy. Are they? No. We're no. not okay, saying so that they are. We're, we're not saying, saying they, they are. So supporting the financial needs of a mother is a need that can be handled through nonviolent means. Exactly. Whereas you guys are advocating for violent means to end the life it's of a violent. person. No, it's, it's not violent. violent. Yeah, it is violent to rip, suction, starve. Uh, it is violent to take limbs off of people. I had a it pill. is violent to induce a heart attack. Yeah, and it you starved. Pill. You starved your embryo. That's what happened. That's how the pill works. You probably did. Jesus Christ. And labs somewhere. That's how you I do that. But, and germs it's, it's, but it's if a human you, being. I feel like we, we keep getting away from the fact it's not, that, though. But it's science not to get says away from. It that life not. begins at conception. It's a human I mean, embryo. Science does not okay. say that. No. The Bible says that. No, no. I have a question for you really quick. I, I have a question. Let's move on to the next I'd rather abort a child than put them through the foster care system. Jesus. And this is like, I didn't consider this until I myself was put into that situation where it's not just get pregnant, put the kid in the foster system. It's that, again, like I said, nine months of pregnancy. Um, and I would not go through those nine months of pregnancy, even though I, if I had the option of um, giving my kid up to the foster care system, um, like, you have to still go through those nine months of pregnancy. It's not just, you can just drop it off. So I feel like first, before we get into this conversation, we need to establish how foster care works. As someone who is in the system, I understand how the system works. As someone whose parents are, had, uh, were foster parents, I understand. The system is not something you can willingly just register your child for, not like the adoption system. 
foster care is a system of the government to protect children who are in um, unsafe environments, that they see the child as being in an unsafe environment. My mother was a drug addict. She, uh, we were living in uh, government housing. We were homeless multiple times. Um, my mother was severely uh, addicted to alcohol, um, just not at a time in her place where she could really have a family, Jesus. but she did have a family. And so my grandmother came and watched us. And my grandmother over time just really was convicted because she was a devout Christian woman uh, of the reality that this is no environment for a child to grow up in. And she wanted to do something, if anything, to help us have a better life. And she knew financially she could not take us in, but she wanted to do something. So she called CPS and CPS came and took me and my siblings away. Now, did I have the best experience of foster care? Absolutely not. I still live today with bruises and sores on my body from foster care. And I was in there up until I was 19 months old. I was a baby, but it still affects me to this day. And I, you know, I, I, really, I really struggle when I hear people say that, like, you know, a child in foster care is somehow less valuable because of the way that the government treats children in foster care, because I just don't think that's a correct opinion to have. Mm -hmm. To treat a child as less valuable is dehumanizing, and I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm 1,000% against dehumanization of any human being whatsoever. I don't think anyone is saying that foster care kids are less valuable. I am. Like, you... Okay, you're gonna have to just listen to this. Oh wait, actually, could I give you this on OBS? Didn't mean that, did you? No, nobody's saying that. I just wanted to make that clear. Do you have a uterus? Oh my God, it does. I do not have a uterus. You do not have a uterus. So I'm not saying that your opinion is invalid or that you should not be included in this oh discussion. My God. But I'm saying that that's important to keep in mind is that you could never be in this position of Sorry. having to decide whether you in your body want to keep and raise a child from your body. You are arguing for uh, the slaughter of human beings because oh. you're choice. And I'm standing here in uh, where, where a fetus cannot a strong fetus, word. so it's not a strong word. It's really not. And but can the I just finish my statement? Of fetuses. We're standing here in defense of the children because they do not get that voice because they do not have that voice because they are in the I'm world. leveling so up stay man. I'm assuming you will, right? That's not an argument you can make because I am currently not in the financial place oh, oh, okay. to oh, have okay. to adopt. Mm -hmm. But it is a choice that I could make <laughs> to become a foster parent. The issue is, is that becoming a foster parent is something that you register with the state. It's something, it's not as easy as just saying like, well, you, you know, you can just one day become a foster parent. It is a long, tedious process. It's expensive. There's tons of they things that go pregnancy, into it. Yeah. I would also Hundreds say, of thousands like, of dollars. You, they, they also, you guys had something to say We're as well. talking about like, who should have a voice in this discussion, but it's like the unborn don't have a voice. They're not yet able to mm -hmm. like have a voice, but they are still human beings with dignity and we ought to respect that. So I think it's like, I think we really need to sort of figure out like, what are we talking about here? Because if abortion doesn't kill human beings, then no justification is necessary. However, if it does kill human beings, no justification is adequate. True. I always say that if murder was happening at the rate that abortions happen at, it would be Armageddon. Like, it is just absolute, women, I think it's like a quarter of women will have an abortion in their lifetime. If that was happening, if an eighth of so the population high. was being murdered, then th it would be the purge. Why do you think we're so distraught though? It doesn't affect you, though. Like, but, but it doesn't affect us. It doesn't, if I had told you, you wouldn't threat, know. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice, justice everywhere. everywhere. But why is Every single person, even if they are not under my jurisdiction, the oppression of that person is my business. Mm -hmm. I, and that's I, what I, it is. I respect because that approach. I wanna, it's, this is, to us, it sort of sounds like, if we're saying it's like, if you don't want an abortion, so if you just don't have one. But it's, it's, we hear it sort of in the same way. It's like, if you like don't like slavery, don't have a slave. It's sort of in the same ways. Because oh it's no, true actually, true. Like it's sort of the destruction of the dignity of a human person. Like abortion and slavery violate the dignity of a human person. So you're person. comparing well, abortion. I, just, I actually I agree with that. I, I actually agree with that, and yeah, I think that ties in nicely tie in. to this whole no, systems and foster care argument because people argued vehemently at the time in which we were about to end slavery that we should not end slavery because we don't have the systems. We don't have the systems ready for all of the slaves that okay, we're now- Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. It's just a boss in a blue dungeon. I should be able to kill this and be fine, right? If I die, I'm done with this fuck shit game, okay? Two potions. I'm a rogue. Okay, just gonna right-click a bunch. 
Shadow step behind. Dash around. Easy. Okay. I'm st Okay. be free there's no jobs out there for them they don't have any land oh we need to keep them as slaves until we have the right system no you don't get to degrade the dignity of another human being until you're ready for them to be here and black until people are you're still ready suffering for them today until you're the ready until you are ready for them to live dignified lives I that's wanna, unjust damn. i, I want to um, touch on the, the white um, moderate um, the white up border foster care system and i just wanted to emphasize that for me um i didn't take into consideration um, the foster care. I don't feel like anybody is less than. I don't think that you're less than. I think me and you are entitled to the same um, rights, of course. Um, just personally, when I made my decision, it wasn't a matter of, I don't want my child to go to the foster care or be adopted out. It wasn't, that wasn't the question. Um, what I took into consideration, what my boyfriend and I decided together was, um, we did not want to put me through um, the physical constraints of pregnancy without him, um, because my, my boyfriend, he is a, a traditional, very traditional Christian, and I, um, I'm no longer religious. I grew up in the Catholic Church, and I, um, I'm not religious anymore, but I respect his views, and he carries a lot of views that you have, um, but because of his consideration to me and his um, approach to the family structure, um, he knew that he was not in a position to take care of me in that vulnerable time. In the, the weeks that I was pregnant, it was, very Wait, is Diablo 4 even that much of an improvement Diablo 3 graphics wise? It looks about the same. You want an ultra hot take? You want an ultra hot take? If you're looking for huge improvements in graphics, play consoles. G consoles have had dramatic improvements in graphics, I think, over the past decades. PC over the past decade? Eh. I think it's like gotten okayly better, but not that much, I don't think. That'd be my, I think, yeah, I think so. Like, when did the, I'm curious, when did The Witcher 3 come out? Like, I feel like if I go back and I look, like, Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2 both looked pretty good. Those games are like 2000, oof, what? I want to say when I played Bioshock 1, I think Rachel watched me play that game. So that must have been like 2008 or something. I'm not saying those that graphics haven't improved at all, but I'm saying like, they're not like, I don't think they're massively improved. Consoles have gotten a lot better, but. Play Bioshock 1 now, it's aged a lot more than you thought. Hold on, Bioshock 1 gameplay. Character now, hold on, let's, uh, let's go to stairs. This is a very convenient. the first human I don't know if that's a human but that's the f I am literally like terrified right now what do you want me to do dude who wants to get beat with a wrench I mean it doesn't look amazing for sure but like this game is 15 years old Right? Now, this isn't fair. But, like, go 10 years before this game. Compare a game, because, so this is back in 2008, I think this released. Now, compare this with a game that released in, like, 1993, another 15 years. <laughs> what, what were we, was 1993, was that the Nintendo? But, okay, sorry extremely hard for me it was mentally and physically draining um the changes that were going on it was to the point where i could not uh, participate in the daily activities that one does go to work feed themselves get out of bed it was very psychologically difficult in that short period of time and we knew at that point that it was going to be a very demanding and laborious pregnancy had I gone through with it, but because of how he feels and his responsibility and his duties that he um, places on himself as a man, he wanted to make sure that that experience 
of pregnancy and when we do decide to have a child, I'm in a point where I can be cared for appropriately. Just the way I waited out, and again, it wasn't because I, you know, had this aversion to the foster care. In fact, I feel like we should better resources for those children because they have every right to be here. Um, I'm more so focused on whether or not, again, should the government enforce and place themselves in such Jesus. a personal matter when it's a matter of people using their bodies. I would think most of us in some regard agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't speak for everyone here. I don't know everyone's like various political beliefs. I yeah. think most of us would agree with you. And that's why we're pro-life is because we see it as that's what the government is doing to children in the womb. The reality that the government could have just, uh, because of the way that the government works and because of the way that the abortion system works, the reality that I just could be non-existent and not exist at all is horrifying. And the reality that my memory, my life, my, the, my genetic makeup, the people that fought for years to give me rights, that can all just be erased, is horrifying. But it would have never happened. It's not like it happened and then like it was erased. Like I was conceived, my mother had the option to abort, yeah. therefore it could have happened. Parents should be informed if their teen is seeking an abortion. So when I was being sexually abused, my parents didn't know. When my rapist found out um, that I had a pregnancy scare, he was like, I will kill you Damn. If, if this is the situation. I'll kill you. Um, and I think that if I had gone into an abortion facility, as many girls and women have, and been forced by my rapist to have an abortion, um, I think that this is another, another, I guess, part of a system um, where mandatory reporting fails, as, as it has many times in abortion facilities, particularly mm -hmm. in Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Parents need to be informed if their child is being sexually abused. And because mandatory reporting often fails in this way, um, because Planned Parenthood is a business and they make money off of what they do, wow. um, I think that it's really important for the parents at least to, to have this knowledge and to have this understanding. Yeah, I think it's a really kind of tricky situation and topic to discuss just because there are so many, like there's such a breadth of situations that can occur and have occurred. And I'm so sorry for what you went through, by the way, but like that situation is really awful and it definitely highlights how um, having parental oversight is good and important in certain situations. But also like there are situations where young people uh, are in situations with abusive households, abusive parents, who if they found out that that teenager, that child was attempting to do something to care for themselves and to help themselves live the life that they need to or for their health or whatever reason they might have for doing it, they'll be prevented from seeking care of any kind, not even just like an abortion. They'll be prevented from seeking any kind of sexual wellness care, health care, of any sort because their parent is aware that they were looking for that kind of support. And I'd like to go off of what you're saying. I agree full heartedly that there are different situations where um, it could be dangerous for the individual to tell their parents and that's why I think um, pregnancy resource centers, which is what we support, are such a, a, a valuable tool because they have the right to put protections over this young individual or older individual. And if they are in an unsafe situation, they house them, they feed them, they get them a job away from the area where they are. You know, they do stuff to help, but also those situations and the situation where the child was conceived, that child still has value. So I, that's why I'm a firm believer in protecting both the mother and the child. I mean, I, I would also like to say that like, as much as young people don't like to hear it, and as much as I didn't like to hear it myself because I had you know, a messed up household because I had a parent who was not, um, who was not a safe parent. I think that parents have rights uh, uniquely, like the, the uh, Ohio uh, Initiative for Choice right now is trying to attack parents' rights, trying to make it so that people can get medical procedures or supposed medical procedures in abortions and not have to notify their parents. Wait, what's going there on have here? been teenagers and young women who have died from abortion procedures. We, uh, we have people that go and counsel outside of 
Planned Parenthoods and abortion facilities. And we've seen, like we've documented, reported to the state suspicious behavior of people bringing busloads of minors in to have abortions. What? And, busloads? And, you know, it's one of those things that we just have to look at the reality and we have to address it. No There's shot. actually statistics that say Holy that shit. the majority of women who have undergone sex trafficking report having more than one forced abortion, specifically saying forced abortion. And we are against that too, right? We are against people being forced into abortions as much as anything else. Holy um, shit. I think parents have an obligation to care for the child that they have in their care. And I think it is a parent's responsibility to support that child, um, of course. But then again, I feel like I'm speaking from a privilege of where um, I, I, I obtained mine when I was already a legal adult, so I didn't have to tell my parents. I just know for me personally, because I went to Planned Parenthood to obtain my abortion, and even when I obtained my birth control or my routine screenings from them, um, some of the questions that they always asked me was, are you safe? Are you in a, a safe situation? Are you doing this because you consented to it? When I obtained my abortion, they asked me, is someone forcing you? And they have signs all over in the clinic telling them, or telling um, patients that they are obligated to report um, if you are being sex trafficked or abused in some way. Um, the reason I disagreed was because I believe the prompt said teens uh, should have to come to their parents. Um, I am acquainted with someone who just had an abortion who is the same age as us, and she did not tell her parents. She has yet to tell her parents. Jesus. Well, I think we're talking about telling parents before the procedure, particularly, because that... That has ramifications. I mean, I'm sure afterwards there's some ramifications, but I think parents, like I said, would have the right to know before you get the procedure. I have a question. Because um, I, I think a lot of us are, co are coming from the approach of like minors, mm -hmm. but I'm saying it specifically with my case because I was already legally an adult when I had my, um, do you feel like even in cases, although we are teens here, I'm still legally an adult should my uh, medical information now that I am legally able to obtain care on my own because that's where I'm going to operate from should even against my wishes should they be informed because I think for me with such a sensitive topic um, I want to go to them when I'm ready um, because I'm, I'm coming here now sharing my story but I was not prepared to come out with mine because it's still something that I agree oh, with guilt days, trip. something that my boyfriend and I um, we still tackle with every day but I just don't agree with the idea that even though I'm a teenager I'm still an adult and I should still have my my I think when people say teenagers they mean minors my right private medical information to my parent if, now that I'm willing and able to make that choice uh, that should be violated. I, I think that we would all agree that, like, for an adult, you know, no, if you're a legal adult, you shouldn't have to tell your parents. Yeah. However, I think we're specifically talking about minors. Okay, okay. Yes, obviously. It's possible to find a middle ground on the issue of abortion? Not possible. Ooh, I think it's impossible. Possible. I think there's fine. I think there's some ways to find some middle grounds. Yeah, I think we already have here today yeah. on, like, certain parts of it. But that's on parts of it, not on the abortion issue itself. Thank you guys for your time and your vulnerability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate hearing new experiences.